Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, hoping not to jinx our team. And over there is John Lewandowski, also hoping not to jinx our team. Yep. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Uh, we are very tired. Well, I am. Yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. I'm right there with you. Our show is brought to you by Hockey Locker. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They're located at 2002 West Howard Avenue. I believe that's right. Yeah, that should be right. I am right. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't done this in a while. I've been, ugh, you don't even want to know. <laughs> I'm saying that to our fans. All right. So I promised to trade show on our Facebook for those of you that watch our Facebook page, which, by the way, we're back. Also, follow us on YouTube. Um, we will be putting, um, most of our shows up on YouTube. Uh, once a week, we're going to do a weekly like breakdown for our Facebook folks, and that's about it. All righty. Um, today, the Preds took on the Wild. The last time the Preds met the Wild, the score was 3-2 to two Nashville, and that was January 25th, and then November 30th, they laid a 6-1 to one beat down on us. Yeah. So let's jump over this one. All right. So, Nashville Predators and Minnesota Wild. Shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshoots Minnesota 13-7. to seven. In the second period, Minnesota outshoots Nashville 10 to 6. In the third period, Minnesota outshoots Nashville 17 to 12. And in total, Minnesota outshoots Nashville 34 31. Um, the faceoff percentage was pretty close, with uh, the Wild having 52.6% of the time, while Nashville had 47.4%. On the power play, the Wild went 0 for 3 with 13 penalty minutes, while Nashville went 1 for 2 with 15 penalty minutes. Nashville out hit the Wild 17 15, out blocked them 10 to 9. Nashville had 10 giveaways to their four and nine takeaways to their five. Scoring in the first period for the Wild at the 951 mark was Connor Dwar, scoring his ninth of the year, assisted by Duhame, his fourth, and Hartman, his eighth. Then at the 1040 mark, Nashville gets on the board with a goal from Yakov Trennan, his 10th of the year, assisted by Yossi, his 44th. Then at the 1048 mark uh, for Nashville, Cole Smith scores his 8th of the year unassisted. Um, uh, before we get into any further into this breaking news as we are going here, uh, the Ducks have traded Ilya Lubushkin to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a third round pick in 2025. Okay. That literally just happened. All right. Scoring in the second is Bill Forsberg with his 29th with an assist from Robin Yossi, his 45th, and Gustav Nyquist, his 34th. That was on the power play at the 1755 mark. That puts the score at 3 2 1. Then in the third, Robin Yossi scores with his 15th. Um, with an assist from Colton Sissons, his 15th, and Cody Glass, his 5th. So apparently I have a thing for fives. <laughs> and we ain't done yet. All right, then we got Ryan O'Reilly with his 21st at the 803 mark. Uh, score with an assist from Gustav Dyquist, his 35th, another five. And Alexander Carrier, his 14th. And then at the 13th, 57 mark. Ryan McDonough scores his third with an assist from Luke Evangelista, his 16th, and Colton Sissons, his 16th. So now we have sixes. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. 
the Preds have played really, really well of late. Yeah, they have. Making it very difficult for Trotz to make a decision, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we sit in the first place wild card position. All righty. Uh, Nyquist had third star of the game. Star second star of the game with a 97.1 save percentage and one goal against. Um, and Roman Yossi with a goal and two assists. Box score in net for the Minnesota Wild was uh, Phil Gustafson. He stopped 25 of 31 with an 80.6 save percentage. And as I said, Saros was the Zaro stopped uh, 33 of 34 with a 97.1 save percentage. Um, like I said, with this, it puts the Preds in first place. They, uh, Kings, as we speak, are playing against the Vancouver Canucks. Uh... That game is currently two to nothing. LA. Um, as the Ducks have just made that trade, they are also beating the Sharks two to one, but that's not a hard beat to beat the Sharks. Right. That's like beating the Blackhawks these days, uh, who are getting pelted by the Avalanche four to nothing. Uh, the Stars game just concluded. The Preds pick up two points on the Jets as uh, the Stars beat the Jets, so that helps there. Uh, the Coyotes lose to the Maple Leafs, so we extend that lead. Um, so divisionally, the Preds are seven points back of Colorado, nine points back of Winnipeg, and it's if they keep doing what they're doing, it's not outside the realm of possibility of catching them. Yeah. That's if they keep doing what they're doing. They also have to beat teams who aren't bad. Right. You know, like not beating the Blues. Um, They beat LA, Anaheim, San Jose, um, Let's see. Who have the Preds played during their streak? <laughs> so they beat the Blues, the Golden Knights, the LA Kings, the San Jose Sharks, the Ducks, Ottawa, and now Minnesota. The only two teams that are playoff teams are the Kings and Vegas. And the Vegas Golden Knights are sitting at second place in their division with uh, the Canucks in first by 10 points. Um, As I said, uh, as you all may know, the trade deadline is coming up. Yep. And it is something that me and John both dread. All right, so the top – I'm going to get just give the top players – and John, you tell me if they move. Okay. Pick up Markstrom for Calgary. Uh, do you think they hold on to him or move him? Um, right now he's playing the best he's played in a while. Um, I I was thinking they'd hold on to him, but he also has a no trade clause, so that's kind of tough for them. They have to figure out how that would work. Right. They're saying the perfect match would be the Devils. UC Saros, um, as we have both talked about, um, he is signed. There is no real rush. They could move him in the offseason. There is no real rush. They do retain him for next year. You right. could have him as the starter and have Yarrow learning behind him, much like they did pack up, but not sure how that goes. And then if they're not doing well, they move him at the deadline. He still carries value, just not as much as right now. If the deal's too good to be true, take it. If not, leave it. Um, yeah. The Wild said that they're not trading Mark andre Fleury, so Mark andre Fleury is there. Um, but they have Mark andre Fleury. Your honorable mentions are um, 
Jake Allen of Montreal. Uh, Elvis Merzlikitz, Eric Comrie of Buffalo, James Reimer of Detroit, uh, Capo Kakinen of San Jose, and Chris Drieger of Seattle. Those are your honorable mentions for trades. For the goaltenders, defenseman Noah Hannafin Flames. Does he go or? Who does he play for again? The Flames. He's a UFA after this year, and right now they're not even close to a playoff spot. Well, that's another hard one for them because he's had good success there in the past. But with being a free agent, if you can get something for him now, I think that'd be the way to go. Yeah, I think that they're they're on the verge for a rebuild. I think that, that just losing the pieces they lost, like losing Gaudreau, losing um um uh, Matthew Kachuk, I think that just was too much. The, the the trades didn't equal out. No, they didn't. And then losing Johnny Gaudreau for nothing, pretty much. Uh, Sean Walker, Philadelphia, I think he's on the move. I think he he he's a good defensive player. He has some offensive ability, but when it comes to the penalty kill and winning, you need guys like him who are going to block shots and, you know. Right. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you probably on the move. Yeah, as they just had in here, Ilya Labushkin, we said he was already traded. Uh, Jacob Chicker, do you think he moves again? He's been on the move quite a bit. Um, he has he been bouncing from place to place. Uh, he has a six point four, uh, four point six million average for next season. There's no real rush to trade him, but and he could be a long term part of Ottawa's future. But there is possible, there's certain potential there. Right. And teams do see that. Uh, Matt Dumba, Arizona, UFA next year. Um, how old is he again? I think he's in his thirty. He's thirty three, but he can play. He's been averaging for Arizona twenty minutes a game. Okay. Um. I mean, he's always been a good player, so that's another tough one. I mean, at least I've always thought he's been a good player. Um probably move him. I mean, I don't know. Arizona's a tough call because they've been doing fairly well this year as opposed to past seasons. Looks like they're going to miss the playoffs again, but nonetheless, they've been doing better than they have been in years. Yeah. Um. Up next is this one's going to, is kind of a double for us. So I'm just going to put them both out there. Alexander Carrier or Tyson Berry. Um, If it was my call, I'd try and keep Carrier and maybe move Barry. It doesn't seem like Barry's fitting in to me. That's been my consensus. And the, I mean, here's my thing. If, I, if if the deal's good, move them both. Right. If the deal's good, move them both. I mean, guys like Del Gaizo and Stastny are ready. Right. Why hold them up anymore? They could bring new life into on top of what you're already doing. Right. So there's that as well. Uh, Joel Edmondson, he plays for Washington. Um, I actually don't know much about him. This one you do. Eric Johnson, currently uh, assist, uh, assistant captain for the Sabres. Uh, he has moved a few times, too. Um, that's another tough one. All right, Jake Gensel for Pittsburgh. We all know who he is. We all know he's up with an injury. Right. There's a lot of chatter that he may be on the move. Yeah, we've heard chatter that they, he may be on the move, and it's got to be a sign and trade. Right. To be honest, if I'm if I'm Nashville, I might sniff around a little bit, see what they want for him. Right. Like, because right now Nashville needs help in their top six. Nashville could be potential buyers, too. Right. So, at the end of the day, Nashville could be something in on – they're looking for forwards. Um, Adam Henrique, he's been quoted to be interest of Nashville, um, as well as got uh, teams like Vancouver and Winnipeg need defense, like, badly. Right. Um, so, um, I wouldn't be surprised – 
to see him move, especially with how the Ducks are right now. Right. So, uh, Pavel Buchnevich, uh just seems like the way that the Blues are going lately. But uh, uh, the, the GM said this is this may be the classic case of the team state quietly saying we're not shopping a player, but we're going to listen to your calls. All right. Um, I honestly think that's the case. Um, Vladimir Tarasenko, um, he does have. A, a lot of scoring upside. Yeah. Um, that would be one I'd see a lot of teams going interested in. Anthony Mantha, he is in the last season of a 5.5 or uh, 5.7 deal. He's a six foot five with sc ability to score and can play physical. That is something that Nashville desperately lacks. Yeah. If there was ever a safe bet that they take, it's that one. Right. Him, same thing with Jordan Everly here. Um, I could see both of these guys on the move, but I could also see, like, as I said, I have we have to look at it from a perspective of Nashville. Nashville is our top pro priority. And understanding that Nashville has a ton, a ton of prospects and a ton of draft capital. Right, and with new leadership this year, we're not going to know what to expect come up to the trade deadline. And uh, each deadline's different, so what happens this year is going to be completely different from next year. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see which direction we go. Much like Everly with the Kraken, same thing with Alex Weinberg, middle six forward, kind of somebody that could help. Um, Frank Verchano, same thing. He's having a – he's on a pace this year for his first 30 goal season, something that if I'm if I'm a couple teams I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, your other possibilities are Jack Roslovic of uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. He was part of that uh, Luke Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, and neither one of those worked out for each other. No. Um, Roslo makes a middle six center, maybe top nine. Um, don't know what to say there. Nick Dowd for the Capitals, very physical player, very, you know, heads up center, good in the face off circle. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Capitals. Uh there's rumor that he could fetch a first round pick just because of the physicality and face off circle. Um, those things being so valuable in the playoffs. Um uh Riley Smith with the Penguins. Um like I said, the Penguins are here or there thing. Um, Anthony Duclair, um, speedy skater with scoring ability, um, has had history with Nick, with uh, with uh, Bruno, our, our you know, with Bruno, our coach, um, when he played for Florida. So um, there's there's some there. Uh, Jason Zucker with the Coyotes, much like the Coyotes, if it's the last year of his deal, and the deal is like, okay, we're gonna give you a third this year, but we'll give you a second in year's future. If we make a certain line to the playoffs, that could be a done deal there as well. Right. Uh, Hoffman, um, I, as much as Hoffman's got skill and ability, I think that his locker room presence is not good. So um, I've never heard good things about him in the locker room. Um, just from what I've heard in past, uh, like the Mike Fitcher situation. Right. Um, as well as a few other situations, well, his time in Ottawa. So I'm not exactly 100% sure on that one. Alexander Barbadoff. For the Sharks, um, solid middle six forward, maybe top nine. Same thing with Kevin LeBlanc. Um, so to to be honest, um, the 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 trade for Nashville that I could see and in, in here, let me throw this in here. Colorado needs a backup goaltender. Kevin Lankinen should be on the table if that is call ever does come through. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about this too. And uh, will the Nashville Predators trade Tommy Novak? Just real quick. Let's kill that. Let's you know get that out of the way. What would it take you to give that up? 
At least a first round. No, no, like, uh, restrictions or anything like that, where if it's like, okay, if you lose, if we go, don't get it, we get a first next year kind of thing? Well, yeah, I'd add one of those, uh, a restriction to it. I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, you know, he's he's done phenomenal work in his development and in his game and putting in time and effort to get where he is, as all players do. But we've seen it's been something special to watch him do it. You know, and that's the question of do the Preds let him go for nothing? It's right. Pretty much sign before the deadline or you're screwed, dude. Yeah. Or at least give us hope. Um and another one that they did. Um uh, uh they had um uh, uh Soros going to Carolina for Martin Dekis in the first round. As well as Vasily Panamarov. So they'd get a first round this year, a second round next year, Martin Dikas and Vasily Panamarov for UC Saros, Alexander Carrier, and it's looking like they're saying that they would have to throw Tommy Novak in there. Now, if Novak's in there, I want an additional conception that um, yeah. like a second in a year after and if he resigns um to be honest I would I would want it to be a first. Yeah. Now if you want to get crazy this off season or this draft season since the ducks are rebuilding let's trade Trevor Zegris to Colorado. <laughs> um all seriousness, the Ryan Johansson thing there has failed much like it failed. There. So, um, uh, by the way, something about this organizational system makes me want to go streaking. Mm -hmm. All, all in fun, not literally. Nor do I want it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it like down a dirt road where it's all abandoned. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, do you think that this is going to be a lively one or do you think this is just the start? Sky's the limit, I think. Um, because, I mean, you have the talk of if Cyro should be on the move and all these other players. But like we continue to say, they have so many prospects that there could be so many pieces moved around if they wanted to. Not First, if I would like this, but if they call Yaro for Nikis, I'm doing it too. Yeah. You know, for, for Mark Nikis in the first this year, I'm still doing it. Vasily Panamaro can go out of the deal, but I'd still want a first. Yeah. Because I gave, I used a first to pick him. So you're at least going to give me that. And there's no guarantee that uh, Nikish is going to reside with us. So All right. that's another thing. I want a guarantee. Just to throw a little monkey wrench in there. We all know how much I love Yarrow. <laughs> just say it I do love I do love Yarrow I think that he has a great future um, Nashville has no problem finding gold yeah but with Saros' age and his time at time to time has been inconsistent right I don't see that from Yarrow no, Yarrow battles either. every night wants to win every night with a smile on his face I watched him get hit with two pucks in Grand Rapids and still kept a smile on his face. He had gave up four goals after that, but just say. Um, um, do you think 
if there was a curveball out there for anybody on the move, who would you think it would be for Nashville? And if you had to give up a prospect in Milwaukee, who would it be? I think the curveball at Nashville might be Trennan. Yeah. I could see that. With a guy like LaRue coming up. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um, prospect. I know we have so many good ones. Like I said, like we're saying I, I have one. It's just that a lot of Admirals fans aren't gonna like me. <laughs> Because he carries some value. And that's Igor. Yeah. Igor's on the cusp. Whether it's in Nashville or another NHL team, I see a bright future for him, too. So it's it's one of those situations where I think he's a little held up by, like, the depth here. And that, that's one problem Nashville does have, is they have so much depth. There's just kind of this log jam. Yeah. So I think moving a guy like Barry, like you said, moving a guy like Trennan, and maybe even Novak, with everything that we have here in Milwaukee, with how Jankowski's played, with how right. everything's gone, do you really need, you know? Right. If you miss the playoffs, you can still send some of these guys back. Right. They'll still get the valuable playoff experience. There's a lot of youth here. I, I just, you know, um, the roster moves to 25 on the 9th. Right. There's a mandatory roster freeze from 3 o'clock to 10 o'clock on the 8th. There's so much going on that when you sit here and, and really talk about this, and really, like, you know, let's keep a level head with it. If the deal's a bad deal, don't take it. Right. I don't want to see our, our our deals be bad deals, right? Like if if you know if the offer is good, but you don't think he might quite fit right, don't take it either. You know because you know you could be Alex Ovechkin, but Alex Ovechkin couldn't. You know if, if somebody said, "Well, you can't score from that circle anymore," right. Like the coach goes, well, you got to play on the backside now. I I'd have to whack the coach over the head with a hockey stick. Right. But like, it doesn't matter if he's, you know, in his prime in his thirties or in ten years from now he's still playing. That dude's a weapon from that spot. Yeah. And and you know that's one of the things I will never take away from certain things. The other thing is is you know as much as we talk about it, you know how much longer do him and Crosby have? Right, not much probably. We've talked about this that, that they've been pretty much the staples of our uh, young adult to adult life. They've been the staples. They've been the face of hockey. Mm -hmm. And they have done great in cover you know carrying the NHL. So um, I'm not a big fan of Crosby. Everyone's well aware of this, but I won't knock his talent. Right. That is something he does have. I do think he's a giant crybaby, but that's my opinion. Take that for what you will. Tomorrow, he could end up in their jersey. I don't right. know. This time of year is nuts. You know? So we never know what's going to happen. All we know is that in practically eight days is the trade deadline. And we have uh, the Preds play the Avalanche on Sun Saturday. They play the Canadians on Tuesday, and they play the Sabres on Thursday. If they beat the Avalanche, I think that they are buyers. Yeah. Because you should have no problem handling the Canadians. The Sabres have been on a little bit of a run lately, I've been saying. Uh, they just beat Tampa Bay. Oh, wow. 
So, um, you know, and that's that's the other part. You know, uh, Tampa Bay's pick next year is a lottery protected. I would, with the way they're going this year. I wouldn't be afraid to move that. Right. They're trending downward. If they end up in a lottery pick next year, you don't get that pick. You get the next year's pick. Not going to exactly help you in the future. So just something that we ought to think about. Um, they do have draft capital as well as uh, multiple second rounds picks. Um, if you do trade Novak for a first and you can bounce that first for some, you know, somebody else, um, like a Tarasenko. Yeah. Or, you know, um, in particularly, I don't think that we need like a middle, a middle six center. Um, cause I mean, it's, it's crazy right now. <laughs> they could sign Cody Hodgson at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, there's just so much going on and, you know, in all reality, it's a very, very paranoid time for <laughs> Admirals fans. Yeah. The Admirals fans are the most paranoid people in the world right now. Thinking they're going to lose him. Here's what I'm going to say. And I'm going to say this. Barring they do trade Saros and he's healthy come playoffs. And they go, you want to go to Milwaukee to win, try and win a Calder Cup? Do you know what that man's going to say? It's going to be yes. It, uh, not that he really has a choice, but, I mean, to be honest, there's so much potential inside this locker room. Uh, got another guy that I could see if you if you need a bigger trade value is Joachim Kemmel. Yeah. Kemmel's been kind of slowing in his production, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a move you know, like somebody go, hey, well, we'll give you this for that. I see it. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, another guy is Joachim Kemmel. I love Kemmel, but you know, yeah. It's it's Nashville wanting to win. Now remember, we work, we haven't really been buyers ever. Not big time. So so there's there's small movement. A guy like Matt Dumba on defense, if you're looking to get rid of Barry in a three-team trade, right? we have cap room we can eat. So there's a lot of room there to move. Um, we will obviously circle back to this this weekend. Um, you know, obviously, we'll, we'll chat her a little more if nothing has happened by Friday. Chatter a little more Sunday. Um, Sunday's show is to be determined on whether or not we're live or not, but we'll see what happens. Um, but there's just so much potential right now, and uh, that's all I got for you. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker. We cover everything Admirals and Predators related. We are hockey fans. That's all we'll ever be. <laughs> just remember... Be safe. Have fun.